in front of a huge crowd at Silver Cross Field in Joliet. Providence Catholic and St. Rita meet for the fourth time this season. Tonight, it's the 4A state championship ball game. And hi again, everybody. I'm Dave Bernhardt, joined by Lee Hall. And indeed, these two Catholic League Blue members, three previous meetings, won by St. Rita by scores of 8 to 1, 14 to 1, and 10 to 4. But Lee, as head coach Mark Smith for Providence Catholic says, it only takes one. That's right. You know, the old adage when you talk about basketball is it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. Well, St. Rita's going to try and do it four times with Providence. I'm sure the Celtics are more than happy to see St. Rita here in the state championship game tonight and get that one more shot at them. Each of these teams got here by virtue of nail biting one run victories. Providence, eight, seven winners over Prairie Ridge, and St. Rita had to come from behind to defeat South Elgin. 3-2. Providence, a visiting team tonight. They'll be wearing their black jerseys. Here are their starting lineup. Ben Salvador, the shortstop spot. Zach Pitch is the designated hitter. He's batting for the shortstop. Jackson Stulis, Dylan Rosa, he got the win last night. Hits 30s at third base this evening. And the lineup rounded up by Mike Madej, Cam Galgano, Jake Godfrey doing the pitching tonight. Justin Hunterford, Jimmy Jeffries, and Matt Deal playing right field. There's a story behind that, and we'll get to that in just a bit. The defensive alignment for St. Rhea. Mateo Zunica is in the left field spot. Shane Peisker in center. Danny Gleaves in right. Tyler Hellis is at third. The shortstop is Marty Bacchina. Chris Delgadillo is a second baseman. Nick Goldsmith at first. Nate Sorry behind the plate, and Jake Shepsky will start this championship ballgame. Jake Shepsky gets the call. He's a six foot, 180 pound senior, appeared in 18 games this year. For St. Rita, he's 7-1, and one, a 1.35 earned run average. Great strikeout to walk ratio, 49 strikeouts to 12 walks. Nine earned runs allowed, 39 hits in 46 and two-thirds innings for Jake Shepsky. Headed to the University of Notre Dame, 9 for 9 and save opportunities. His first start of the season was May 17th against Mount Carmel, but here he goes tonight. Facing him will be leadoff hitter Ben Salvador. Shevsky pipes that first one. Salvador last night, one for four, a run scored and a run driven in. Salvador this season, the senior, 382 average out of the leadoff spot. Shevsky takes a little bit off of that one, quickly ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. This may be about as filled as this stadium has been for a high school final. Here tonight on a gorgeous night in Joliet. Really impressive crowd, Dave. And, and it's not just one side or the other. I mean, you can see the St. Rita fans are here, the Providence fans wearing their green. It's a, a great turnout tonight for IHSA baseball. Stepsky wastes one on 0 2, now 1 2, waiting on deck. Zach Pitch. Pitch had the big hit last night for Providence to. Put them on the scoreboard. That just misses outside to Salvador. St. Rita, 37 wins, just four losses. This was a team that won the state summer title last year and then ripped off 26 straight wins to start this spring season. In foul territory, Tyler Hallis for the first out of this one. Bring up Zach Pitch. Pitch, we said a couple of RBIs at one hit. Played third base last night. The designated hitter tonight for sophomore shortstop Jackson Stulis. Pitch himself a sophomore. And he'll go first pitch hunting. And they'll say there was contact in the box. Our first base umpire in this championship game. Andre Morgan said there was contact. There is Andre. Our home plate umpire tonight for the 4A title game, Bob D. Leonardis and Dave Seastrom, who just worked the third place game, is now working the third base side of this field. Outfield straight away, fairly deep for pitch. On the season pitch, the 5'11 sophomore, 325 average, seven doubles, and now 10 runs batted in. Providence with a 27 and 14 record struggled out of the gate and a rough patch in the middle of the year where they lost five in a row and sandwiched in there were a couple of losses to St. Rita. They have recovered and have done a job here in a postseason. 
tough play for the shortstop Marty Bakina right there at the tarp. And he's looking up into the sun that's starting to pour over the third base and left field side here of Silver Cross Field. Now you talked about it a lot last night too, Dave. Uh, Providence, they're 27 and 14. Those 14 losses, kind of deceptive. I mean, they're probably played the toughest schedule in the state when you look at the teams they've played and, and in their conference. They finished fifth in this Catholic League Blue Conference that St. Rita, St. Lawrence shared the title. Flip side, St. Rita won 26 in a row to start the season. Right, they obviously play in the same conference. Providence got to Joliet by virtue of a come from behind six to five win over Edwardsville. A little soft line drive to Bikina for the second out. I'll bring up Dylan Rosa. What a great postseason Rosa's had. Two for three last night. Two runs batted in. How about this run by Rosa? The regional semifinal had a go go ahead two run double in the championship game of the regional a two run double and a game winning home run championship game of the sectional a go ahead two run single and in the super sectional it was Rosa that hit a walk off three run triple in the bottom of the seventh inning to knock off Edwardsville last night all Rosa did was pick up his fourth win a two hitter through his six innings of work. That's a spinner. Delgadillo will not get Rosa. So Dylan Rosa picks up his third hit in these finals, and he's aboard with two out here in the first. Boy, he is on some kind of roll. Just feel like he can do no wrong. He hit that little squiver just to the right spot and beats it out for the infield single. Dylan Rosa doing no wrong since the postseason began. And that will bring up tonight's cleanup hitter, Mike Madey, the second baseman. Normally, this spot is reserved for Phil Kunza, the normal right fielder. However, last night in the first inning in that game against Prairie Ridge, Kunza on a slow roller to the shortstop, running down the first base line. The throw pulled the first baseman from Prairie Ridge off the bag. Kunza ran into him, and in the umpire's judgment, shoved his hands forward, called it malicious contact. Kunza was ejected, which means not only was he done last night, he cannot play tonight, and that is taking massive numbers out of your lineup. Kunza with 11 home runs, 359 average, and 46 runs batted in. Madey looking for that bunt single, and Shepsky will have to eat it. Not much he could do there, Dave. That was uh, a beautiful bunt by Mike Madey, who went 0 for 2 last night. Just perfect spot. Took that big chop. We've seen that left side of the infield uh, give some pretty favorable bounces to the hitters. He got a favorable bounce in that it got all the way out to the mound and then just deadened out there. And uh, Jay Shepsky couldn't really do anything with it other than what he did and just hold it. Cam Galgano, the left fielder, plays collegiate baseball down the street at Lewis University in Romeoville. Rips it hard. Goldsmith gets a good glove on it. But here comes Rosa. He will score. Providence the early one to nothing lead. Madey around to third. And with two outs, single, single, single. The Celtics on the board. Pretty tough chance down there for Nick Goldsmith. It would have been... Uh, a heroic effort to get that when he made the dive, but it was just out of his reach. And the Celtics have come out here swinging in the top of the first. Jake Godfrey, the number six hitter in the lineup tonight. He will be doing the pitching. Last night, Godfrey with the double, part of his two hits. An 11 hit attack last night for the Celtics in their one run victory. All these hits coming with two outs. In the first two, nothing. Extraordinarily hit hard. It was a spinner off the bat of Rosa, then a great bunt single by Madey. Godfrey checks it up. We'll talk more about Godfrey when he gets out to the mound. 21st round selection in the amateur baseball draft by the Atlanta Braves. 
coming into the tournament. It's a 235 hitter. They said last night, two for three. And left fielder Mateo Zunica, very, very deep for Godfrey. Wind blowing from the right field corner to the left field corner, about 10 miles per hour. Good fastball, good cut from Godfrey. Once again, they'll drive Galgano back. Want to give the catcher Nate Soria an opportunity. Soria, known for his defense, will be going to Xavier University. Seven Division I commits for St. Rita. For Providence, 12 players will move on to play college ball. Ball and two strikes to Godfrey. This inning got tough for Jake Shepsky in a hurry. Two quick outs and now three straight singles. And he'll finish it with the strikeout. In between all that, one run scores on those three hits. After a half inning of play, Providence on the board, St. Rita coming to the plate. Big time wins here for the schools in the finals in 3A, 4A. Lamont won the state championship with 35 wins. Sacred Heart Griffin with 38. And here in this championship game in 4A, St. Rita, 37 wins. This is their batting order tonight. Gleaves, Heisker, and Shepsky doing the pitching tonight. Then Hallis, Goldsmith, and Soria. They'll finish it up with Marty Bikina, Anthony Farron batting for Mateo Zunica, and then Chris Delgadillo at second base. The Providence defense looks like this. Cam Galgano is in left field. Ben Salvador in center, Matt Deal is in right, Dylan Rosa, Jackson Stulis, Mike Madey, and Justin Hunterford across the infield third to first. Jimmy Jeffrey is the catcher. Jake Godfrey on the mound. We saw Godfrey in relief yesterday. He gets the call here tonight in the championship game. Jake's a 6'3", 205-pound senior. This is his 14th appearance. 6-6, six and six, a 3.02 earned run average, great strikeout to walk ratio, 90 to 36. He's allowed 51 hits in 65 innings and 28 earned runs. So he's been hot in the postseason. Three wins and a save in the playoffs for Godfrey. Fastball pitcher, he'll bring it. Hard to you to the leadoff hitter Danny Gleaves. He was kind of hanging on for his life though last night. Yeah, he was hit a little bit last night. Gleaves pulls this one foul just past his head coach Mike Zunick in the third base coaching box. Zunick in his 18th year at St. Rita, 531 wins. Gleaves had a hit in three at bats in the 3 to 2 victory over South Elgin. That was a ball game that. St. Rita led one to nothing, fell behind two to one, stayed that way till the bottom of the sixth before the Mustangs pushed two across. Leaves goes reaching for that one. Leaves this season a 541 batting average coming into this mm. tournament with 46 runs scored. 40 hits on the season. <clears throat> and Godfrey gets him. Well, that has to feel pretty good to Jake Godfrey. He lost to St. Rita earlier this year. In an inning and a third, Godfrey gave up nine runs, including four home runs to the Mustangs. And now he faces the left-handed hitting Shane Peisker. Peisker, a crucial triple for the Mustangs last night. Triple was Peisker's lone hit. Three at bats. St. Rita only three hits all night. They came from three of their top four hitters in the order. He drove in a run, also scored a run. Now 
opportunity for Madej. He gets that kind hop. History for Providence Catholic in championship ball games. They won it all in single class <coughs> baseball in 1978 and 1982. Finished second, our head coach Mark Smith here in Joliet in class 4A in 2011. On the other side for St. Rita, the last two times they have made it to Joliet, 2009, 2010, back to back second place finishes. It's the fifth appearance in the finals. And Shepsky tries to find himself on by way of a bunt. 2009, St. Rita lost to New Trier, 4 to 3. Following year, Naperville Central beat the Mustangs 10 to 4. And when Providence fell in the championship game in 2011, it was Lions Township, 8 to 3 winners. <laughs> You are a master of preparation. You know it all. You see it all. The great Kreskin has nothing on you. All balls can be very dangerous. Please keep your attention focused on the field. When I look again, Lee, through this crowd, there aren't that many empty seats here. And of course, people on the berm oh. took something off. The catcher, Jimmy Jeffries, nearly was able to catch it. A lot of folks standing on the concourse too, Dave, and oh, yeah. uh, even some upper deck folks with us. Very impressive showing here tonight. It's best, the largest crowd I've seen for an IHSA baseball game. Yes, I agree. <coughs> A little bit too far outside for Shepsky to think about it. Dave Shepsky leads his team with 48 runs batted in. He is up there spanking. 405 average, 12 doubles, seven triples, and five home runs. Kind of a perfect storm. A couple of uh, one very local team and another team from the Chicago area, and and playing the game here in Chicago land. Great rivals as well. <coughs> it's not just a one-year rivalry. Godfrey's making some really good pitches here to Shepsky, who does a nice job of spoiling them. Well, and you've got a couple of schools with folks that really follow these programs, their school and whatever the sport might be to our friend Jim O'Boy here, the great St. Rita alum, one of the many alums here in the crowd tonight. He's bemoaning the fact that St. Rita has not scored a lot of runs, and in fact, they have not here in their last four games. Godfrey misses, count goes 2-2. Beat good teams. I mean, let's make no mistake about it. Defeated Lions two to nothing in the first game of the sectional, then knocked off Mount Carmel, the team that had beaten them last year in the sectional final. That by a four-three score had to come from behind and defeat Downers Grove South two to one in the super sectional. As we said, squeaked by with a three to two win over South Elgin last night here in the semis. How about this at bat that Shepsky's having? Little gamesmanship. He's stepping out and calling time and trying to throw Godfrey off his rhythm, and it's uh, working a little bit here. And again, another case of the familiarity. Kind of can get inside everybody's heads here. Here's the 3 2 pitch. And the easy one hopper to Hunterford. And in the end, it becomes a 1 2 3 inning in the bottom of the first. One inning in the books here for a title ball game. Providence Catholic on top, one zip. Three straight singles with two outs netted Providence a run in the top of the first inning. They'll give it a go here in the top of the second. Seven, eight, nine. Justin Hunterford, Jimmy Jeffries, and Matt Deal. And you get a view of the crowd here at Silver Cross Field. I would say when we get the numbers following this one, it will be the biggest crowd for a state championship baseball game. That wide shot, it's not as hard, it's not as easy to see, Dave, but when you look out here right into the stands, I mean, there's, it's just a, a really great crowd. Not too many empty seats to be had. Shepsky delivers, and that's a strike call to Hunterford. Another two hitter performance last night. Hunter for a two for three, two runs scored, a run batted in, had a double. Look out into oh. those crowds. I hope that hit a railing because it ricocheted out of there in a hurry. And everything seems to be okay behind the Providence dugout. The fan waves his arm. He got down in a hurry. <laughs> 
Quickly, the count 0 2 on Hunterford. He hit the deck, and that was a good idea. Justin Hunterford. Slices this one to right field up in the sun. Glees makes it look easy. One gone to Jimmy Jeffries. There is Danny Gleaves, multiple sport athlete. And Hunterford swing just lifted it out to right field. So the catcher, Tom Jeffrey. So Tom Jeffries, left hand hitting catcher. We mentioned this last night injuries and for Providence this year they went through and at one time they caught six different players. And Jeffries rips a bullet to right field and for just a second Glees was thinking about throwing to first but Jeffries one of six catchers used by Providence this year. That's amazing he's a get with a courtesy runner that's Dylan. That, that can't be right. I think that's Alvin Perez, 29. The number is tough to read on the Providence jerseys. Perez last night had a couple of stolen bases. Providence right fielder, number two, Matt Deal. And we go to the number nine man in the order, Matt Deal. He was called on early last night. He was just going to kind of kick back and enjoy the semifinal game. And then when Phil Kunza was ejected, Deal went into right field. He ended up getting a hit and two at bats. Also scored a run. Left hand hitting junior came into last night's game with only 13 official at bats this year. I got him. Shepsky, the quick move. And right on the money. And Elvin Perez, after two stolen bases last night, picked off here in the championship game. And Mark Smith is going to take issue with that call. He wants a conversation. Bang, Andre bang, Morgan. play. Bang, bang, play. Tagged him on the arm. I'm not so sure he didn't get his hand in there, though. So obviously the call stands and that becomes a second out of this inning. It's a tough tough field over there right field uh, the runners taking leads off first the first baseman holding runners on they're looking right into the sun. And, and so is the first base umpire I mean all around there's a lot happening in a very tough sun field right now. Deal line drive stays up long enough for Gleaves to make the catch. So in effect, it becomes a one, two, three inning, and we played an inning and a half. Your four eight title game finds Providence on top of St. Rita one to nothing. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Providence on top one to nothing. Reminder that the first three times these teams met, the first two were in conference play. Chicago. Blue conference play St. Rita knocked off Providence 8 1 and 14 1. The last one was the third place game of the Stevie Bachensky Memorial Tournament. And St. Rita knocked off the Celtics 10 4. And that ended a three game losing streak by Providence in that tournament. Lost to Joliet Catholic Academy as well as Andrean from Indiana. Three powerhouses in those two states Indiana and Illinois. We're at number four in the order here in the second inning. Tyler Hallis, third baseman, leading it off against Jake Godfrey. Godfrey a fastball that ranges from 89 to 93 throws an 81 mile per hour slider. He struggled early in the year tried to do a little bit too much and you look at his record at six and six that would somewhat indicate a somewhat paralleled Providence in the schedule they played and some of the struggles they had There's a good pitch slider runs away from Hallis. At times Providence has played Four sophomores in their infield. They count infielder catcher. Another good pitch, and that will be the second strikeout of the game as Hallis goes down. And 
Nick Goldsmith. He'll come to the plate, power hitting first baseman. Goldsmith is lined from last night 0 for 1 with one RBI. That RBI was a bases loaded walk. That came in the sixth inning. And it led to the 3 to 2 Rita win over South Elgin. Boy, Godfrey finding the strike zone with a curveball slider combination. Nice breaking pitch there. Yeah, he stays off speed with Goldsmith. 6'3", 220-pound senior, Nick Goldsmith. Team leading nine home runs, 46 runs batted in. 47 after last night with a 413 batting average. Now Jeffries to throw to first. And another strikeout for Jake Godfrey. Two up, two down. Nate Sori, the catcher. Godfrey has retired the first five batters he has faced. Well, that, that pitch aside, he looks much more comfortable on the mound tonight, I think, than he did last night. He came in a situation, runners on the bases, and is the catcher, Nate Surya. One big hop to Stulis, and another one, two, three inning. Rita goes quietly in the second. Two in the books, one to nothing, Celtics. Mike Wright, base hit. One run scores. Here's the throw. Lamont will win the state championship. And that was the thrilling finish in our 3A championship ball game. Lamont, the two to one win over Springfield's Sacred Heart Griffin. Lamont had the first two batters in the bottom of the seventh, trailing one to nothing. They were out. And then the magic happened. Lamont, your 3A state champs. Don't know if we can duplicate that here in 4A, but we've got a one to nothing game. We go to the third. Send it over to my partner, Lee Hall. Nice Dave Bernhard, top of the order now for Providence Catholic. Ben Salvador, Zach Pitch, Dylan Rosa. Salvador fouled out in his first at bat, lifts this one to center. Shane Peisker drifts into left center field, and makes the catch. There's one quick out here in the top of the third. Jake Shepsky gave up three straight singles. Designated and that accounted Zach for the Providence pitch. run. <clears throat> Back in the first inning. Now Zach Pitch lined to short in his first at bat. Strike one from Shepsky. Headed to Notre Dame, as Dave mentioned earlier. Three year starter for the Mustangs. Last two times out, Chepsky has given up just five hits. Got the win in the super sectional, a two to one win over Downers Grove South. Also, a five hitter against Lions in a two to nothing shutout in the first game of the sectional. I haven't really seen Chepsky drop down and throw sidearm. He had never thrown sidearm before in a game. He threw in the bullpen the week before the sectional. Liked what he saw, and he was pumped to try it, and he pulled it out in the sectional. And Shepsky with his second strikeout. His pitch goes down swinging. There's two outs for Dylan Rosa. He singled with two outs in the first, got that rally started, scored the only run in this game. Swings on the first pitch, lifts it down the right field line. Tough son, but there to make the play is Chris Delgadillo, the second baseman. And it's a one, two, three inning for Jake Shepsky. And the Mustangs come in to take their cuts at Jake Godfrey in the bottom of the third when we come back. 
Think you've got what it takes to play in college? Meet with college coaches at the NAIA Showcase in East Peoria June 20th through the 22nd. Learn more at NAIAShowcase.com. First pitch, the bottom of the third from Jake Godfrey is in there for a strike. If you need a place to stay, give me a call. We've got an extra room. We could negotiate something there. <laughs> Two hopper to third. Dylan Rosa comes up with it, makes the throw across. And that's seven straight retired for Jake Godfrey. Marty Bikina ground sharply to third. Rosa very calmly just sat down on that ball, sucked it up on a short hop. You gotta like those one pitch, one out starts to innings. Tony Farron, the DH, steps in, his first at bat of this ball game. Looks at a ball in the dirt. Godfrey last night in his one inning of relief threw 19 pitches, gave up a couple of hits, and allowed an earned run. Didn't strike out anybody, walked a batter, threw a wild pitch. Farron calls time. He was 0 for 2 last night. DH and went in at second base. Looks at a strike. Talking about the folks standing in the concourse area, way beyond the left field wall, there's a party deck out there, and that yeah. is filled. How about that? There, they're scrambling to get up there right now. Way out yonder. Hey, you're on TV, Hadi. It's a pretty special night here at Silver Cross Field. The 2-1. A little bit up from Jake Godfrey. And it's ball four. First walk of the game for Godfrey. Godfrey. Brings in Chris Delgadillo, the second baseman. Five eight senior, two sixty nine hitter. Swings at the first pitch, chops it foul. We've seen here in these two days, and historically here, even though they water this field between every game, the sunlight and the breeze here today, that left side of this infield especially really hardens up as the day wears on. Something to keep an eye on as we progress through this one. Yeah, we saw some one hop base hits it. Hit right in front of home plate and bounced over the third baseman's head here last night. Godfrey throws over again. One strike on the batter, Chris Delgadilla. One out here in the bottom of the third. One nothing. Providence the lead on St. Rita. Maybe the St. Rita guys have talked about this a little bit. There's a lot of timeout being called. Trying to maybe work a little gamesmanship on Godfrey. And it worked here. Bounces all the way to the backstop. The catcher slow to get it. And here comes Farron all the way to third. How about that? The hustle from Tony Farron, the wild pitch. Tom Jeffries couldn't find it initially. It bounded all the way to the wall by the time he caught up with it. Tony Farron was rounding second base, so he takes full advantage of that wild pitch. And he's 90 feet away. And Jimmy Jeffries just a little bit slow, not just finding it, but once he did find it, a little bit slow attacking it. I said Tom, it's Jimmy Jeffries, sorry. St. Rita looking to tie things up. Strike two from Godfrey. He retires seven in a row. Walk, then a two base wild pitch, and all of a sudden Rita is right there. And again, timeout call. That is definitely in the game plan here tonight on Jake Godfrey. They want to disrupt his rhythm any way possible. 
14 RBIs for Delgadillo this season. He looks at a ball outside and works it to three and two. Grounded to the right side. That'll get the run home. Great job. Great at bat for Chris Delgadillo. He gets an RBI. Gets the run home. That's just great situational hitting by Chris Delgadillo hitting to the right side and getting the run home. And you have to think about that when you step in the box and you practice it. You're preached to you. Just put the bet on the ball. And that's exactly what he did. That is fun baseball to watch. And Danny Glees will head to first base after being hit by that pitch. How about that? A walk, a wild pitch. Farron advanced two bases on that and scores on a ground out. So still no hits for St. Rita, but they have tied the game at one. Shane Peisker steps in. Now the runner goes, and he's out, thrown out by Jimmy Jeffries. Danny Gleaves. Ends the inning with the stolen base attempt. A run on no hits. And we're tied at one, headed to the fourth inning. We head to the top of the fourth. St. Rita ties it in the bottom of the third without the benefit of a hit. And we are all knotted at one for a state championship game. Lee Hall, Dave Bernhardt coming your way from Joliet, Silver Cross Field. It'll be four, five, and six for Providence. Mike Medea to lead things off, singled and was stranded at third back in the first inning when Providence scored their run. Jake Shepsky's first offering is outside. Medea dropped that sweet bunt down the third baseline, and here in this second at bat for Medea, he's brought that third baseman, Tyler Hallis, in on the grass. A little low. Shevsky, a couple of strikeouts. He's allowed four hits. No hits for St. Rita, but we're tied at one. Here's the 2 0. Right down central, 2 and 1. Today, just a shade under 300. The sophomore looks very comfortable at the plate. Very comfortable, very confident up there. Fouls that back, and even now at 2 2. St. Reed outfield playing about as deep as any outfield we've seen here this weekend. Zunica deep in left. Heisker pretty deep in straightaway center. A day bounces one up the middle. Marty Bikina couldn't get to it, and that's the first hit of the semifinal, final four action, I should say, for Mike Madey. He leads it off with a base hit. There's the hard infield. That first, that first bounce really accelerated. And the second one fooled Bikina. He was kind of cruising into that one, figuring he'd time it. It shot right by him. Cam Galgano singled home the only run for a Providence. He shows bunt. Shevsky throws over. And Madei back in time. Tyler Hallis in on the grass expecting bunt. Galgano pops it up. And Nate Soria gave chase. So did Hallis, but they couldn't get there in time. Galgano looked down to third base. He knew exactly what he did. He tried to push with his bat rather than, as we've said all weekend long, just catch the ball on the bat. Squared again on 0 1 as Shepsky throws over. Well, the thing that's interesting here with Galgano, watch him when he squares around and shows the bunt. He crouches down. Now, your strike zone, though, is where your normal stance would be. That's his strike zone right there. When he dips down, that strike zone stays where it was, where his original stance was at. So, I mean, a pitch that would be truly maybe about the bill of his cap when he is crouched, 
That could be called a strike. Okay, here he comes. He will sink down a little bit. So he lost about three or four inches there. Didn't matter on that one. Well, and he's he's scoring to in this situation, he's bunting to sacrifice. Pure and simple. But his form is bunting for a base hit. That can be a problem. And you see it all the time. Major leagues everywhere. Nobody knows how to sacrifice bunt anymore. Here's the 1-1. One -one. And a throw over from Shevsky in the dirt. And Nick Goldsmith deserves a pat on the back for coming up with that one. If you take a look at the shadows. The shadow for Shepsky stretches halfway to first base. So that means that Sun is in a direct line with Goldsmith. Take the bunt off. And Galgano fouls it back. Now he's behind one and two. It's always frustrating for a coach. You want to bunt. You want to bunt. We need to get this runner over. And then you see a couple of attempts that didn't look good. You say, "Okay, I'm going to let him swing," and then all of a sudden, you have two strikes on you. I'm going to throw, start a bunting and free throw clinic. <laughs> well, the most boring. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> if you're looking for activities, if you're looking for big professional <laughs> contracts. I could have taught Shaq how to shoot free throws and actually make them. Here's the one, two. Outside to Galgano. I wish Arnie Harris was here. There's a hat shot to be had down the third base line. Can you see it? Neon orange about four oh. rows up on the other side of the dugout. Yeah I'll see it even better in about an hour when that sun <laughs> goes down. <laughs> two two to Galgano instead the throw over and Made is back. He's got Shepsky's attention over there though. I really like Jake Shepsky's quick feet on that pick. Plus his arm it just comes right from his ear. His hand comes right by his ear but the feet key the move. Swing and a miss. Third strikeout for Jake Shepsky. He went upstairs with that one, and Galgano could not catch up to it. Shepsky has a fastball, and then he has a faster fastball. That's what he <laughs> showed Galgano there. Pitcher, Jake, Jake Godfrey. Godfrey steps in. He struck out to end the first. Five hits allowed by Shepsky matches the number he's allowed in each of his two previous starts. Mike the day he's going to need a little work on that uniform after this game he is ground in some dirt in this <laughs> in this series right here how many times has he had to dive back you know that's the other thing we've seen a lot of pitchers throw over that way and it does take a little bit out of you a base runner obviously it takes away some of your timing and maybe your aggressiveness but just the idea that you're pounding yourself into the ground each time. He's got to be pretty beat up. I mean he's been and he is trying to extend that lead and looks looks like he wants to go here with one out. This wouldn't be a bad time. Line to left in comes Zunica the left fielder and makes the grab. Madea hustles back. There's two outs now in the top of the fourth for Justin Hunterford, who flew out back in the second. That ball Godfrey just hit had a lot of top spin on it. Looked like when it left the bat, it was going to carry farther, but because it had the top spin, all started sudden it started sinking on Zunica. He did a really nice job of staying with it. Mateo Zunica, son of the head coach and a sophomore. The day dives back again. Hunterford a nice game last night. Two for three, scored two runs, knocked in another. Tries to keep the inning going here with two outs and a runner at first. Looks at a strike from Jake Shepsky. We're in a fourth inning and number seven hitter. Seeing Shepsky for his second time. Of course, these two teams, no mystery to each other. 
St. Rita's averaged almost 11 runs in the three victories over Providence. Pitch out. Madej goes. The throw is high into center field. Here comes Madej to third. There's going to be a play there. He beats the throw. The throw gets away. Hunterford's going to stay there. Or Madej, rather, is going to stay at third. He's got to be exhausted. That was a pitch out and a bad throw from Nate Soria. Sailed into center field and Madej, some good wheels there. I thought that was kind of risky. And that was all Shane Peisker was right there to pick it up, but the throw bounced in and got away from the third baseman, Hallis. And that was completely Madej's decision. He had the play right in front of him. That was his decision to get to third. Hunterford now with a big RBI chance here with two outs. Grounds it to the right side. Delgadillo fields it and throws him out and ends the inning. So a little danger there for Jake Shepsky giving up the leadoff single. Stolen base and an error gets the runner to third where he's stranded. We go to the bottom of the fourth, tied at one. And we're back at Silver Cross Field in Joliet. Lee Hall, Dave Bernhard, Providence Catholic battling fellow conference member St. Rita for the 4A state title. And we're tied as we head to the bottom of the fourth. Jake Godfrey on the mound for Providence, facing Shane Peisker to start off the top, uh, bottom of the fourth, rather. Peisker grounded out in his first at bat. Peisker the swing and the miss. A big day for St. Rita alum Mark Payton, who's the center fielder for the Texas Longhorns. NCAA record 101 games reaching base going into today. Played on both second place teams. And a strikeout for Godfrey. That's his fourth K of the game. Brings in Jake Shepsky. Peyton, a 16th round draft choice of Cleveland earlier this month. Rita pitcher, Jake Shepsky. His alma mater playing for a state championship here tonight. Shepsky grounded out to first in his first at bat. Here's the 0 1 from Godfrey. Breaking ball stays outside. Tried to back door there. 1 and 1. You look back to the last time St. Rita was at the plate that caught stealing so huge. Godfrey was a little bit shaky, and that caught stealing ended the inning and maybe settled him down a little bit. His team came to the plate, had a little bit of action there, allowed the big man to get, get a little bit of a breather, both mentally and physically. 3 0 oh now. Strike on the outside corner. Shepsky headed to the University of Notre Dame. Fouls that one out of play. It's full count. Great weather all weekend here in Juliet. We cap it off with a 4A state title game and the best crowd that we've seen at an IHSA baseball game. Ground ball to second. Diving play by Madej and he gets the runner. Big time, big time play by Madej. Heading hard to second. Watch the timing on this dive. This is a fast infield. The timing right there. And then quickly to the knees, to the feet, and by a step. That kid is going to be battered and bruised. He dove back into first base about 20 times last inning on the pickoff throws and then dives there and makes a play defensively. Mike Madej flashing the leather. Two outs now here in the bottom of the fourth. Tyler Hallis steps in. He struck out in his first at bat. Jake Godfrey still has not allowed a hit. Breaking ball a little low from Jake Godfrey. Oh. 
And as I check, Mark Payton for Texas tonight, hitting in the three hole, was 0 for 4 in a 3 to 1 loss. The University of California, Irvine. The Anteaters. The Anteaters, indeed. And uh, from all appearances, he did not reach base, so that NCAA record will stay at 101, and it will now be up to somebody else to see if they can top that. That's an amazing mark. 101 straight games reaching base. So maybe Mark uh, obviously disappointed a College World Series, the loss there, but he, maybe he's tuning in here on IHSA.TV. Deuce is wild there. Two and two, two outs, and now it's a full count. To Tyler Hallis. Tyler Hallis decided to go to St. Rita High School, lives in the western suburbs, and if he had gone to the local public school, he would have gone to South Elgin High School. So played against some of his buddies. Strike three, fifth strikeout for Jake Godfrey. He gets Tyler Hallis looking to end the fourth inning. We go to the top of the fifth, tied at one. We go to the top of the fifth in the IHSA 4A state championship game. Conference members Providence and St. Rita tied at one as we go to the top of the fifth. Lee Hall, Dave Bernhard with you on the NFHS network and IHSA.TV. Huge crowd on hand tonight. Celtics and the Mustangs, their fourth meeting of the year. St. Rita 3-0 against Jeffrey. Providence coming into this one. Jimmy Jeffries, the catcher, steps in. He singled in his first at bat. I'm going to go ahead and tweet a picture out of tonight's crowd. Pretty impressive crowd here tonight. That one hit the edge of the grass and rolled right at Delgadillo. He had a little trouble handling it, but makes the play. Something a little bit something I really liked about Delgadillo. He bobbled that one. It came up on him, and rather than trying to reach it one hand with a glove or reach it one hand with a bare hand, he just kind of sucked it up, put his two hands together, kind of cradled it to his chest, got control, and made the play look easy. Matt Deal, the right fielder. 0 for 1 tonight. Hit the ball hard though, lined out to right field. Had a hit last night. As we said, Deal, not many at bats here this year, came into the tournament with just 13 at bats, but he's who Mark Smith went to when Phil Kunis was ejected from the game. Looks pretty comfortable up there right now against Shepsky. And sometimes, you know, coaches just get a feeling. Maybe this is the way that Deal was swinging batting practice. Maybe just something that was happening somewhere else. You just get a feeling that this guy is ready to do something. Shepsky deals to Deal. Swing and a miss. Two and two now. Swings like that can make you think. He finds the barrel on it. Something good will happen. Deal one for two in last night's semifinal win. And he looks at strike three on the outside corner. Fourth strikeout for Jake Shepsky. Yeah, what a great pitch that was. He took that fastball, just ran it away from Deal. Tough pitch to take. That close to the strike zone, but no way could Deal pull the trigger on that. Shepsky 52 pitches coming into the inning, 37 for strikes. Go back to the top of the order for Ben Salvador, 0 for 2. Sun sinking lower over the left field line at Silver Cross Field here in Joliet. Bittersweet night. Last night of the baseball season for high school. Yeah, I was just thinking that same thing last night for the high school sports season. Take a little breather and what the countdown to the first week of football is right. next week, right? <laughs> yeah, it seems like it goes that fast, doesn't it?
And speaking of football, you're looking at two perennial powers, St. Rita and Providence Catholic, and the football side of things as well. Providence finished fifth in the conference. And here they are. A little looper, a little setter, and a diving catch Woo. by Shane Peisker. Oh, what a play by Peisker in center field. He robs Ben Salvador of what might have been extra bases. Full length and a ball turning away from him. Peisker looking like Mark Payton, who formerly patrolled center field for the Mustangs. Want a scholarship to play college sports? Check out NAIAShowcase.com. Fifth inning stretch here in Joliet. Well, they'll play seven innings scheduled, so. I have a feeling, though, this one could last beyond seven the way we're moving along here. You get that feel, and then you get the feel there could be that one explosive moment. We're getting the late innings right now. It'll be five, six, and seven for St. Rita here in the bottom of the fifth. Nick Goldsmith to lead things off. Swings at the first pitch and rolls foul. Goldsmith struck out in his only at bat. As have four other St. Rita players. Goldsmith, a 413 hitter, nine homers, nine doubles, and a triple. 46 runs batted in. He has that home run type swing. The wind blowing out to the left field corner from right field. So ball hit to left will carry a little bit here. In fact, as I say that, it's shifted out to straight away left field. Goldsmith had 46 RBIs coming into state semifinal action. He added an RBI in last night's win. Here's the 0 2. Breaking ball in the dirt from Jake Godfrey. Well, I don't know what Goldsmith's thinking about, but if he glances up and looks at right center field, Oh man. Center fielder Salvador shaded almost in the left center right fielder deal straight away. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number six for Jake Godfrey. Godfrey has that look about him here tonight. They said he was tattooed earlier this season by this very same St. Rita team. And that one's inside and it hits Nate Soria. Just deflected off of that sleeve as that fastball just ran right inside on Soria and very quickly we will get a courtesy runner for the St. Rita catcher. Matt Murawski he had a lot of activity on the bases last night. Second hit batter for Jake Godfrey in this one. Go along with one walk and six strikeouts. Still hasn't allowed a hit. Marty Bikina, the shortstop, steps in. Godfrey throws over. Last time Rita attempted to steal, Jimmy Jeffries threw out Danny Gleaves. It was a great tag in the play by sophomore shortstop Jackson Stulis. Pretty good opportunity here to possibly run again. Murawski gets a lead. Breaking ball up high from Jake Godfrey. That time Godfrey used the quick set after throwing over. Just hit, paused for just a moment, and brought it home. There's a shot to left, foul. We're told that Godfrey struggled earlier in the year, tried to do too much. Not struggling here tonight. Three year starter Godfrey. Four and five record last year to 1.99 earned run average. Again, six and six this year. But you know he got the ball in many of those very tough games, tough opponents Providence has played. A late bad swing by Bikina there. He falls behind one and two. McKean has been a clutch player for this St. Rita team. 
Another Division I prospect. There are already seven Division I commitments here on this baseball team. The one two runner goes, ball in the dirt, easy stolen base for Murawski. Murawski had a pretty good jump and he had a great pitch to work with, even if that ball had been anywhere near for Jeffries to catch. But there he is, just 180 feet away from the lead. Here's the jump by Murawski. Quick shoulder turn. And now he's and he got off picked second. off. The courtesy runner gets picked at second, Matt Murawski. Stulis coming in from behind. What a quick move from Godfrey. We've had two pickoffs in this game. And Bikina pops it up. Third baseman Dylan Rosa takes over and it in essence is a one two three inning after the pinch runner gets picked off. We go to the top of the sixth tied at one. We head to the top of the sixth the 4A state championship at stake here in Joliet Providence Catholic and St. Rita tied one one. I'm Lee Hall and we'll give it back to Mr. IHSA. My partner, my friend, my hero, Dave Bernhardt. I'll take one of the three. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we're buddies. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Come on, Mochambo. <laughs> Two, three, and four in a Providence lineup. Jake Shepsky. Shepsky has allowed five hits, just one run. Pitch is lined out and is struck out. Zach pitch to start it, followed by Rosa and Mike Madej. You know, looking back at that, those final couple plays in a span of Two pitches. That inning turned completely around. Pitch on the chopper to Delgadillo. He's been busy out there tonight. One out. But here you had Murawski on one pitch stealing second. St. Rita has a runner at second and one out. Third base. Pick off. You're out at second. Next pitch, pop up to the third baseman. You're out of the inning. I know you have a lot of free time, Dave. Yes. <laughs> this ball is hit hard by Rosa to left field. And it's gone! was a laser beam out of here. I didn't know whether it could sustain the elevation. Gone in a two to one Providence lead. Man, 11th homer of the year for Dylan Rosa. And the Providence crowd went absolutely bug nuts. So did the uh, dugout. And Mr. Clutch does it again. We detailed Rose's accomplishments in the postseason. He's given his team the lead in the 4A championship ball game. Wow. I'd like to have a stopwatch on how long it was from contact till that ball cleared the wall. Mike Madej at the plate, two for two tonight. Absolutely launched. I think the Providence, I think the Providence crowd was as stunned as I was. I thought it may go off the wall or land. It just kept going. It didn't have the trajectory you would expect from a home run, Dave. It was hit so hard, such a shot, I thought it was going to go off the wall. Wow, this huge crowd is buzzing, at least on the first base side where all the green is being worn. We are in the top of the sixth inning in a two to one Providence lead. They picked up a run in the first. Rita got one in the third and then the solo home run by Rosa. And you can feel the buzz Ooh. going through this ballpark. Yeah. That's just I mean look the at that folks crowd. in green are loving it. Look at that crowd here tonight in Joliet. A day with a good cut slices it out of play onto the concourse. They are NFHS production truck. 
and I saw Craig Anderson of the IHSA talking to one of the photographers earlier. And I think I, you know, we were up upstairs, and he was way down by the home by home plate, and a base hit by Mede in the hole. Mede is three for three. Anyway, I think I think Craig was asking the photog to get a shot of the ballpark. The entire, you know, like one of those uh, fisheye lens shots where you see a Wrigley Field or what's that other place in Chicago? Oh, so U.S. Cellular Field, that other team place. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed. It'd be a pretty cool picture though tonight to see all the fans here. It's uh, just as a, as an IHSA sports. And a high school baseball fan, it's really fun to see this kind of a crowd at an IHSA baseball game. Indeed, you know, what a great, you know, promotional picture this would be. But on the other side of this, you have a Saturday night, a summer night, middle of June, a lot of different things that you could do. And yet, what, three, four, maybe 5,000 people out here tonight for this one. Cam Galgano, a single and a strikeout. Seven hits allowed tonight by Shepsky. On the other side, Jake Godfrey is allowed a run and has not given up a hit through his five innings of work. <clears throat> We've already had a runner on each team picked off tonight. Mede back easily there. See, we need, need to keep important stats, like how many times Mede has been had to dive back into first base. How many pinch runners, courtesy runners get picked off? Things like this. This is what we need to know, Dave. <laughs> that would be a whole new division of the Illinois <laughs> High School Association. Well, I was before that home run, I was saying, you have a lot of free time. You can go back and research these things and help me prove my point. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. Courtesy runners are not a good idea in the state finals. I'll just say that. That's my theory. It's played out. I don't have well the research here. to prove it yet. Maybe that'll be my master's thesis. <laughs> I anxiously await. I know that you do. <laughs> Galgano takes up and away. So Shepsky, a lot of attention played to Mede at first base. And in the meantime, the count has gone to 3 0 on Galgano. Godfrey pacing the on deck circle. On the outside corner. One gone here in the sixth. Dylan Rosa moments ago electrified this crowd. Logano back into the screen. <laughs> Down at first base, Mede was smoothing the dirt a little bit. It's a pretty good poke out there, too, Dave. What is that about? Well, he's probably talking what? 350 to the power oh, alley? At least, yes. 330 down the line and left. Oh, oh Mede! If that throw had been on the yep. money, he would have been picked. He was going. Yep. Goldsmith had to reach to his left to get that throw and reach across his body to tag. That throws on the bag. You're right. He's gone because he was going. Galgano to left center. Zunica comes in. That's the second out of the inning. That ball was in the air a long time. Gave Zunica a chance. To make that catch. Jake Godfrey. Jake Godfrey. A strikeout. A line out to left. So if they were to pick off or throw out the runner at first, would they say, go ahead, punk, make my day? We're not even on cable, okay? I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, it's just about entertaining you. Yeah. <laughs> I've written every one of these down here over the last two days. <laughs> my, my summer reading. I can't wait to read your book. <laughs> <laughs> my day took a little time there to 
himself gathered. And he'll take his lead from first. One ball to Godfrey. This is just this is just a fun weekend. It's a long weekend. It's a lot of baseball. I wish people could see the amount of preparation work you do for this tournament. It's it's a credit to you that we know what we know about these teams in such short notice and to watch this level of baseball and to be able to announce it and talk about it is uh, a great thrill. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Well you are welcome and thank you very much for those thoughts. Godfrey oh. yanks this one deep and foul. You now between games tonight I was thinking how many times are will this be a personal record for me in the terms of number of one run games we had three yesterday two more today and we're working on our third here it's coming in the 4 a championship ball game. They're yeah, very competitive uh, both 3 a and 4 a tournament this weekend. Well here in 4 a it was a pair of one run games late rallies that got these two teams playing here this could have just as easily been Prairie Ridge versus South Elgin in this championship game. One two count call strike three Godfrey knew it. So Shevsky ends up striking out Godfrey but it was the second batter of the inning. Dylan Rosa the line drive home run that's given Providence the 2 1 lead. There's Jake Godfrey the most important thing with him right now number 23 as he looks to his buddy Dylan Rosa who just gave him a two to one lead. The most important thing is that one run difference. Rosa with that line shot. Godfrey will go to work eight nine and one Dave Bernhard Lee Hall Silver Cross Field Joliet for a championship baseball game. St. Rita 37 and four three of those 37 victories have come over this Providence team in by large margins. First pitch a strike to Tony Farron Farron scored without benefit a hit he walked went all the way to third in a wild pitch scored on a ground out. Jake Godfrey might uh, tell me I'm completely wrong about this but last night it looked like he was trying to aim the ball a little bit maybe trying not to lose that big lead and tonight he's just gone out and let it all hang out he's not playing not to lose he's playing to win tonight. Yeah, I, I feel that same way. He is pitching like 21st round draft pick. Barron just able to get a piece of it and that's funny that you said that I saw him after the game and I remember the thought going through my mind you know son the way you pitch today you're not a draft pick. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and tonight he is just really you know that's you got to be careful you can't you can't make a judgment after one outing but boy tonight he has proven that he is all that he has had every pitch working this evening. Six strikeouts he's hit a batter hit two batteries he's walked one it's not allowed to hit. Farron who he waited as long as he could just to make sure and spoiled it. That may not have been a pretty swing but it was an effective one for Tony Farron the designated hitter. He's batting for the left fielder Mateo Zunica. Only his second and bat and we're in the bottom of the sixth. That's that tells huge. you everything yes. you need to know. They haven't even gotten all the way around the order twice yet. He's able to fight that one off. This is a tough play. Godfrey gets there in time. <laughs> Such a tricky play for pitcher and first baseman Justin Hunniford. And that was hit in no man's land. Uh, Godfrey was going to make the play on the ball, but then he realized that Hunniford was there and he had to haul, you know what, to get to the bag in time, and the no hitter is alive. That would have been an infield single. To the number nine batter in the lineup, Chris Delgadillo. He has the RBI. It came on a ground out in the third inning.
Jimmy Jeffries mitt is popping. Another chopper. Let Rosa that go foul. in fair territory. And they can't make the play. Yeah, that would have been a decision I think Rosa would have wished he had had over. And that will be an infield single. And the no hitter is gone. And the tying run is at first base. You got to let that go foul. Yeah, that was turning all the way. In fact, it's interesting as to where that ball was actually fielded. And we will get a pinch runner. Hmm. Pitch runner for Delgadillo. This will be Matt Murawski. Now he was the courtesy runner last inning. So this will be a direct substitution. He is the pinch runner here. Remember Murawski, the last time he was on the bases, stole second and then was picked off second. Oh, really? He is now a pinch runner, not a courtesy runner. Oh. So now new rules apply. Mm, 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 mm. Rosa was trying so, to make something happen there that wasn't quite there. Lead off hitter Danny Gleave struck out and has been hit by a pitch. He was caught stealing in the third inning. It's so easy to second guess or make that call from up here but I'd say you got to try and let that one go foul as close as that was to the third baseline with as much Territories that had to cover before it reached the bag. Jam shot. One relay. Nope. No. Good job by Hunterford to get off that bag. Second out of the inning. Center fielder Shane Heisker. Well, you can't underestimate what Hunterford did right there. Shane Peisker had a triple last night in a similar situation. He stands here 0 for 2 and leaves at first base with two outs in the sixth. You know, and back to Rosa's play, one wonders whether Dylan Rosa is thinking, I want to protect this no hitter. There goes Gleaves. This ball's hit into the hole, into right field. Gleaves will motor through second base, head to third, and with two outs, the Mustangs have runners on first and third. Big hit by Peisker there. Right through the hole. Now the conversation on the mound is how do we want to defend a two out first and third situation with all the different things that you could do here in a one run game. At the plate, it will be Jake Shepsky. So our two starting pitchers will face off in this at bat. Shepsky leads this team with 48 runs batted in. 24 extra base hits. And he is just wandering by himself by home plate while the Celtics lead out on the mound. Offense must remain in the grandstand. No one is allowed on the field except players and coaches. Thank you. Left fielder for Providence, Galgano, shaded towards the left field line. Center fielder, Salvador, shading towards left center field. The right fielder, Deal, playing straight up. A mile between center fielder, right fielder. There goes a the runner, and they'll let him go. So Peisker steals second, and now you have the tying run at third, the go ahead run at second. Korshevsky, listen to the crowd. Line drive, Made on one hop. And we go seventh. A look at our Silver Cross scoreboard. The score by innings, if you are up on your binary code, you will see. And also, if you cheat a little bit, it's two to one Providence. Here as we go to the top of the seventh. What drama here in Joliet. We had it in a 3A title game, and it's happening again here in 4A. 
We start the seventh as Hunniford will spoil this one. And drop that foul ball into his home stands. Look at all the folks out here for this ball game tonight. It is quite a crowd. Shepsky with the curveball for a strike. He's allowed seven hits tonight, two runs. Shepsky has not walked a batter. You know, we look back into that first inning, the count one and two now on Hunterford. Providence's first inning, one out, two outs, then an infield single, a bunt single, and a ball hit hard down the line. Doug Adil takes it off the chest. And throws it into the dugout. Off the dugout at any rate. A good first play by Del Gadillo. The throwing air will put Hunterford at first base with nobody out. Took it off the chest and might have had a chance if the throw was within Nick Goldsmith's reach, but it was over his head. Yeah, I, I definitely think he would have had a chance. Just rush that a little bit. And now a bunting situation for Jimmy Jeffries. Now he squared to bunt, Dave, and I know you know this. He squared his body and moved his feet instead of just look at that. Now his shoulders are square. He did offer there and missed. Yeah, there's different techniques that some coaches a program will teach it a certain way. Other ones will say we'll try the different techniques and whatever works best for you will go with. That was not a great attempt there by Jeffries, however. That gets down. Force play attempt at second. No. What Tyler Hallis was counting on. Now the throw is not a good throw, but what Hallis, the third baseman, was counting on, that ball was in the air a little bit. He did not think the runner at first, Justin Hunterford, would take off. He thought Hunterford would freeze, but instead Hunterford was high tailing it for second all the way. Yeah, I know what he wanted to do, but I think in that situation you've got to take that sure I out agree. first. I agree. So a couple of misplays by third baseman here in the last inning. Dylan Rosas cost a, a no hit bid at that point. And that one puts a runner in scoring position. Alvin Perez has come on to run at first base as a courtesy runner for Jeffries. Anthony Serafini has come in to run at second base for Hunterford. And the batter at the plate is Matt Deal. He's the number nine hitter in this Providence lineup. And you've got to believe Deal is bunting. If you're a base runner, two pinch runners out there, you must make sure this ball is down. And run the pickoff behind Serafini. Perez at first base has the first baseman, Goldsmith, in front of him. Here comes the wheel play. They'll look for the force at third. Executed perfectly. A good bunt, but the wheel play with Hallis charging. Bikina, the shortstop, breaking immediately for third base. They get the force for the first out of the inning. Well, that, <laughs> he called that perfectly, Dave. That is executed perfectly by Hallis. Back to the top of the order for Providence. Leadoff hitter. Center fielder. Fourth chance for Bikina, but he uh, kept his foot on the bag and made the play. Yeah, that, that went unnoticed originally, but that was a nice little pick. Top of the order, Ben Salvador. 0 for 3 tonight. They will shade him more towards left field. They're bringing in the right fielder, Danny Gleaves. You need your outfielders here to be able to throw out a man at the plate. Alvin Perez at second base. And they'll try to look to Perez. Salvador hitless tonight in three attempts.
Ben Salvador, a 5'7", 150-pound senior. Hits this one hard to right center field. Gapped him. He did. Perez scores easily. And Ben Salvador has stretched this to a two run difference. Mike Gleaves had been brought in, the right fielder. And Salvador found the right spot. He sure did. He had to stay put at first base. He was about halfway to second. The runner at second, or the uh, runner had held up. He's now at third. Runners at first and third, and that's. Excuse me, a foul ball there from Zach Pitch. Deal is at third, Salvador at first. The infield is in. Mark Smith wants to. He could steal behind the second baseman and shortstop here. St. Rita will give the stolen base here to Salvador if he wants it. Yep, they'll pick that way. Because that's what Salvador was thinking. What I was trying to get, I, I thought that was a pinch runner, but it is deal. He kind of held up around the second base area to make sure that that ball was down. Otherwise, Salvador would have been standing on second. And actually, that was a closer play at the plate because Perez was doing the same thing from second base. There goes Salvador taking all the way. A three to one Providence lead. Runners second and third, still only one out. This two, it's a squeeze situation. Pitch over three tonight against Shepsky. On deck, number 24, Dylan Rosa. Here's a squeeze. That's a run. A four to one Providence lead. Perfect execution again, this time by pitch. Deal scores. Providence thought that maybe Goldsmith was off the bag. Two outs in the inning. Two runs in. A four to one Celtics lead. And still a runner at third base. Salvador is there. We're going right after Rosa. Last time up, Dylan Rosa with the score tied at one. Rockets one out of here. Gone for a two to one lead. It's now stretched to four one. I didn't have a stopwatch. I counted in my head. It was less than four seconds. Oh my! <laughs> it was it was a laser beam. Only one hit this inning. It's the single by Salvador to drive in a run. A throwing error started it. An ill-advised decision on a sacrifice bunt. In the air, Glees will drift to the line. And that closes the inning, but two more runs come across the board to the bottom of the seventh. Providence, a three-run lead and three outs to a 4A championship. This has been a classic in Class 4A. Providence took a 1 0 lead in the first inning. Rita tied it in the bottom of the third. We stayed 1 1 until Dylan Rosa took one out of Silver Cross Field for a 2 1 lead. And then the Celtics 
on just one hit in the top of this inning has scored two more. So Jake Godfrey on the mound, a three-run lead. He needs three outs. Providence with two state championships in their history, the last one in 1982. St. Rita, the last two times they were here in a championship game, they came up short. No state titles for the Chicago School. Tyler Hell is to lead it off, the number four hitter in the Mustangs lineup. He has struck out twice, once swinging, once looking. Both those pitches inside. Godfrey tonight has already hit two batters. Remember, St. Rita has defeated Providence three times this season. Jam shot. Godfrey wants it. One out. A lot of times you'll see the pitcher uh, give way on those plays and then the ball drops because the fielders can't get to it. Godfrey did a nice job fielding his position there. He jumped off the mound and got there. It was his ball. Makes the play and what a game he's pitched tonight. Nick Goldsmith will take strike one. He's only allowed two hits. One an infield variety. St. Rita defeated Providence 8 to 1 on April 30th, knocked off the Celtics 14 to 1 on May 3rd. On May 24th, it was a 10 to 4 Mustangs victory. <laughs> Providence finished fifth in the Catholic League Blue. One gone in the seventh. It's all about going out there and getting better every day, right? This is a different Providence team than the team that lost those games. Little off speed pitch. They got him! Stula stayed with it. A bang bang play at first base and two outs here in the seventh. Nick Goldsmith, not a lot of speed as a first baseman. Stulis knew he had time and he hung with it. And Providence is just one out away from a state title. Nate Soria. Strike one. Providence crowd on their feet. 5,000 people go quiet. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> a ball and a strike to Soria. Strike two. How they can be that loud one moment and when that pitch was made it was just dead silence. I've never witnessed that before. Usually they just keep cheering wildly when you're at a big crowd. Right back to Godfrey for the championship. An unlikely run to a state 4A championship. The Providence Catholic Celtics win their 28th game of the year. It's their first victory over St. Rita in four opportunities this season. They did it on June 14th, and it results in a state championship. And how fitting that Godfrey makes the last play. And with that, Providence takes their third state championship, their first since 1982. They lost their last three regular season games and win six straight to take the state title. They came from behind in the super sectional. 
The Celtics came from behind last night in the semis. Tonight they took the lead, broke away from a tie. Dylan Rosa, they shot the home run over the left field wall. Two insurance runs in the seventh. And your 4A state titles. Well, here's how the kids say it in the shorthand now on texting. And it's SMH, shake my head. <laughs> and that's just what I'm doing. I mean, are you kidding? Fifth place in their conference and they win a state championship. It's a uh, testament to these kids uh, just, you know, and, and they're beating the team that really didn't just beat them but took it to them in the regular season. St. Rita won the summer title a year ago. They won their first 26 games this year. But it's Providence who wins the final game of the 2014 IHSA high school baseball season. Congratulations to Lamont Indians, dramatic winners in Class 3A for the title. And in similar drama, here in 4A, Providence Catholic will bring the hardware home. Great week in Joliet, Lee. I appreciate you sitting alongside. Great ball games, fun ball games. Always a pleasure to work with you, my man. Pleasure's all mine, my friend. You are a definite pro, and I was just robbing to your Batman this weekend, my brother. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Our thanks to our entire crew here with the NFHS Network and those of you folks that have joined us on IHSA.TV. What a thrilling way to cap off the 2013-2014 IHSA sports season. There you have it, your final, the 4A title goes to Providence Catholic. The Celtics knock off St. Rita 4-1. For Lee Hall, I'm Dave Bernhardt. Thanks for joining us on IHSA.TV. At this time, please meet the Mustang of Chicago St. Rita, who finished the 2014 season in second place with a final record of 37 wins and five losses. Chairman of the Board, Reverend Thomas McCarthy. President, Ernest Mrazek. Principal, Brendan Conroy. Athletic Director and Head Coach, Mike Zunica. Assistant Coaches, Vince Fiore. Richard, Richie Josepher. John Nee. And players, number one, Andrew Maestri. Number two, Tyler Ellis. Number three, Chris Delavidio. Number four, Danny Kipp. Number six, Jake Shevsky. Number seven, Nate Saria. Number eight, Marty Akena. Number nine, Sean Jacox. Number 10, Jake Drada. Number 11, Matt Morosky. Number 12, Matt Ryan. Number 14, Dominic Saro. Number 15, Esteban Martinez. Number 17, Grant Mullen. Number 20, Danny Budziak. Number 21, Jack McNamara. Number 22, Shane Peister. Number 23, C.J. Weidemann. Number 25, Nick Goldsmith. Number 26, C.J. Santoyo. Number 27, Neil Smith. Number 33, Danny Gleaves. Number 41, Matt Lenzen. Number 42, Anthony Farron. Number 44, A.J. Fuller. Number 51, Mateo Zunica. And number 56, Mike Cascanzo. The Mustangs of Chicago St. Rita.
please meet the Celtics of New Lenox Brothers. who finished the 2014 season in first place with a final record of 28 wins and 14 losses. President, Father Richard McGrath. Principal, Don Donald Sebastian. Athletic trainer, Morgan Johnson. Trainer, Patrick White. Head coach, Mark Smith. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Chris Carlson. Frank Cavallone. Garrett Kransky. Jim Thomas. Jason Vitas. And now the Celtic players. Number two, Matt Deal. Number five, Ken Galgano. Number six, Zach Pitch. Number seven, Ben Salvador. Number nine, Jimmy Jeffries. Number 10, Mike Madej. Number 11, Nico Kutsulis. Number 12, Greg Dankovich. Number 13, Justin Hunnifer. Number 14, Phil Kunsa. Number 15, Anthony Serafini. Number 18, Richard Yusa. Number 19, Brent Villasenor. Number 20, Sal Amada. Number 21, Eric Dupac. Number 22, Joe Tideback. Number 23, Jake Godfrey. Number 24, Dylan Rosa. Number 28, Justin Davis. Number 29, Elvin Perez. Number 31, Sean Cavallone. Number 33, Jake Carlson. Number 35, Tom Jeffrey. And number 38, Jackson Stulis. The Celtics of New Lenox Providence High School. Would Coach Zunica and the captains of Chicago St. Rita please step forward to receive the second place team trophy. Thank you. 